Good afternoon, everyone. It's Keith Walker from Northwest Local Land Services, and welcome to our second webinar for Check Ready Grow 2.0 um, for 2020. And uh, we'll just run through some housekeeping issues. Um, firstly, thank you very much for making the time for our webinar today. Um, many of you, you run multi-million dollar properties. Um, we've got some great information coming up for you about business planning and, and setting your strategies. And we'd like to um, encourage you to um, stay for the, our webinar and indeed to register for our third webinar that's coming up uh, next Wednesday. So um, everyone's on mute, but you can ask a question. And we've also got um, there's a little dialog box that we'll run through in a minute, but see on the side of this slide, we've got poll questions. So if you could just have a look at those poll questions as they come up. Uh, that first one, where are you dialing in from today? Gives you a bit of an idea of uh, the style of questions that we'll be asking. So in kicking off this morning, uh, this afternoon, I'll begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we're meeting today. And that's the um, Camilleroy people. And I'll pay my respects to those elders, past, present and emerging. Okay, so um, the purpose of the Check Ready Grow webinar series is that we've, we've tried to look at our natural assets and our production assets and try and tie those two uh, elements together and also couple that back with our grant funding for 2020-21. So uh, we've got some information about um, some grant funding that will be brought to you through the webinar series. And we're also thinking about doing a, uh, a fourth webinar that will outline how to actually go and fill out the funding, the grant funding application. So um, if folk are interested in that, certainly stay tuned and even drop us a, uh, a little note in that question box, just saying, yes, we're interested in, in attending that so we can get a bit of an idea of the demand. I've already had a few people um, very interested in, um, in doing that them themselves. Okay, so our, our role, I'm part of the natural resource management team. Um, based up in Gundawindi and working back into Northwest New South Wales. We have two folk here. We have people um, in um, Moree, two folk in Moree. Our managers in Moree, Leonie Coleman is based there as well. Uh, Angela Baker in Gunnedah and Tim Watts in Tamworth. We also work in conjunction with the Ag Advisory team who are spread around the, uh, the, the region as well and our regional agricultural land care facilitators who are based in Tamworth and Bingra. Um, now, we do have assistance to help um, get these um, applications up and running. So don't be afraid to get onto the email or the, uh, the phone and let us know your, um, your uh, concerns there. Okay, so without any further ado, um, we've got some really interesting discussions coming up with Beck Feng. She's amazing at what she does with all her webinars and information that she puts through to people. And uh, today we're looking at business planning, goal setting and, and the, um, the funding opportunities, how that ties in. So thanks Beck, I'll let you take it away. and. Um, Thanks everyone for attending. Thank you um, very much, Keith, uh, for the invitation and the kind words. We've just had a little bit of a joke offline about um, moving from uh, webinar, I guess, fatigue to webinar anxiety, where we're beyond, we're waiting for a technical glitch or you know to present the wrong content to the wrong people. But uh, rest assured, that's not gonna happen to us today. 
We have 25 metres of cable in my, uh, in my office to uh, mitigate any uh, flaws in internet connectivity, which we all face in regional areas. So we're doing our darndest to present a quality show for um, the people that have joined, uh, joined in. Uh, Leonie, if you might, would I, uh, could I ask you to launch our first poll question, which is actually inquiring um, who is online. Um, and we say at this point, um, uh, welcome to some people maybe, but also welcome back. So if you did dial in last week, and we are going to uh, make the assumption that um, majority did dial in last week and continue the story from there. So if I can ask for people to um, uh, to be dialing in, uh, to be um, answering that poll question, we're only going to leave it up for a couple more seconds. So um, get in and answer that and we'll get a good handle on where we have people dialing in from. So maybe another five or ten seconds there and Leone, who is our technical guru, um, will close that and um, yeah and show it for us. Okay well good to know that the investment of local land services um, is very much um, reflected um, in the location of the punters that have dialed in. So as I first started to uh, discuss last week we d uh, had a discussion around the direction of your business. We talked about um, uh, about values and visions and missions and and uh, where we're headed in our farming business. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is is more business planning and goal setting and strategies. If you can recall last week, we um, I drew an image or presented an image of um, a direction. And what we're going to do today is talking about putting rubber on that road. Next week, uh, if you'd like to come back again, we're talking risk uh, management. So we're going to talk about the things that uh, impact your business um, and uh, how we can go about putting some systems in place to manage and mitigate that risk. As always, uh, we have a template to support um, our webinar. So it's going to come across your emails at the conclusion of this presentation. Um, so you can actually put in place some of the things that we have that we've spoken about this morning. So let's um, make a little bit of a start without any further ado. Um, as um, Keith mentioned early in the piece, if you have any questions, um, if we can get you to put them in the question box. Um, everyone is on mute for the purpose of um, the continuation of the program, but what we will do is Leonie will bring those questions to our attention. So um, we're here today to talk business planning and, and goal setting and the role that um, that can play in our business um, in primary production. So if you have a look at the components of a, a clinical business plan, uh, it really does um, obviously sets your overall direction and intent of your business, but it also um, has a look at uh, the goals. What are you trying to? What are you actually trying to achieve in both the short and long term? Then uh, also looking at strengths and weaknesses and opportunities and threats and all of those things um, that can impact both positively and negatively on your business. Next week we're going to talk about um, risks um, and today a little bit of stuff around um, that strategy. So again, by way of a reflection, uh, we have really started to put, um, uh, have a handle on that direction. So the vision, the where, the why and the churn. So what is it that your business is trying to achieve and why? But also what are some of the, the values, the core values of the, of the business, but also the individuals in that business that start framing up how we make decisions, but also uh, where we allocate our energy and resources, which is really important. So. Let's make a start by having a think about um, a SWOT analysis. And I would be interested um, if anyone wanted to pop in the question box, um, if they have gone down the path of um, doing a SWOT analysis for their business. But um, there's three components, uh, three, four components to this. Um, there's two where we look at both the strengths and, and weaknesses. So the strengths that really are the things you do well. What is it that your business offers, potentially that's different to your um, competitors? What are the qualities of your business that sets you apart. Um, 
Are you capitalising on them? Is it internal resources? Is it your asset base? Is it your natural resource base? Is it the capacity of the individuals to really succeed? Um, is it a skill set that is unique to your business that comes forward um, as a strength? So these strengths are very much the tangible part of your business, but also the capital, like the intellectual capital, the intellectual property and the skill set of the team. Um, that being said, this, the same goes for the weaknesses. So what are the things that your business or company could potentially lack? is do you have um, a handicap by way of location, natural assets, um, you know, is it that one of the weaknesses is the size and scale, either um, is it too big or too small, or is there something that your competitors have that you don't actually have? And again there, it could be around that capital, that IP and, and uh, capital resource as well. Again, sometimes it's like a direction that can be a weakness of a business. The flip side is what are the opportunities that are in front of your business, but also what are the things that are currently threatening your business? So from an opportunities perspective, um, is it a market that you could capitalise on? Is it that you're in an area with little competition? Uh, depending on the industry you're in, sometimes competition for primary products um, is quite limited and as much good quality product as we can put on the market, someone will take. So uh, sometimes um, that competition, if you're um, dialing in from a horticulture or a specialised livestock business or specialised grain business, maybe that isn't the case and your market access is an oppor real opportunity for you and the loss of that is a genuine threat. Um, but also, is there somewhere where you can position your business or your product by a way of being opportunistic that your competitor hasn't yet seen? Um, and also, is there an opportunity for you to put forward your business as a leader in the industry by way of um, effective communication, promotion and marketing? So have a think about some of the opportunities that are posed in your business um, and whether or not you're capitalising on those. The last um, part of a SWOT analysis uh, is that of the things that threaten your business. We're going to talk in a moment about the circles of influence in farming uh, and the fact that we operate in a really unique environment because many of the things that negatively impact our business are out of our control. And for those of us who have watched um, farming businesses across the whole of Australia come through drought over the last um, four, five, six, ten years, uh, that's a perfect example of that given threat. The, the threat of a, the climate, which we have little control over, is very real. But if we were to look at some of the things we can control, um, are there any competitors? Are you in a uh, in a uh, an industry where um, other competitors are, um, are, could potentially take your market? Uh, we are at the mercy of um, regulation. So, is there any uh, legislation or regulation that is emerging that could um, pose a threat to your to your business. Again, um, our reputation uh, as clean, green, sustainable and productive producers is very important to us. And is there anything that is um, that could threaten your business in that respect too? So without uh, much further ado on that uh, content, there's a, an opportunity for you to have a look in your um, in the workbook that's going to come across your desk um, at those, um, you know, the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats um, of your business. Um, but then let's have a good discussion around goal setting. And there's a, um, while I introduce some of these topics, hopefully um, there is an opportunity uh, for a little poll to be launched, the only around um, whether or not you set goals. So um, what I am going to have a look at, I think it might be paused there just slightly. Is there a poll on its way? Maybe. Um, anyway, uh, I have noticed in my yeah, sorry, uh, Beth, work. Sorry, sorry, Becca. Leone here. Yeah, the poll's just been launched, so it should be um, visible. I'm not sure. It might be visible to the 38 incredible attendees, yeah. Leone. Yeah, I'm getting people um, reply to that. So it um, is some people can't see it and some people can, obviously. Okay. Well, I'm going. To, how about I talk about this topic for a few minutes and then we'll um, and I'll come back when we can we put the results up at that point. Would that be okay? Sure. Sure. So um, I was saying um, a moment ago that 
my um, uh, my take on goal setting in, and planning, particularly in agriculture, is that there's a real mixed appetite for it. Um, and I do think it comes back to that conversation around the things that we can control. And we did see businesses um, throughout the drought that had an appetite for planning versus those who, who didn't. And I think also throughout this period of recovery, there may well be a shift in appetite for setting either new goals, a, a, a change of direction, or um, you know, having some more solid recovery plans in place as well. Um, and I think it's a, you know, it would be remiss of us at this point to suggest that um, the role that local land services can play in that process is, is quite genuine through investment of on-ground works and training um, for your business. So um, if you think about goals and planning, there's a lot of things that are parts of your business that you have to manage. Right, the strategic planning, which is some of the stuff we're talking about today, versus some of the financial planning. I'm suggesting that the financial stuff would possibly do quite well. And also that investment in infrastructure and capital, usually done quite well as well. Um, next week, risk management, again, a varied appetite there. And then we go into that natural asset and production space where people are doing might be breed planning, grazing planning, whatever it might be, rotational planning for cropping countries, but all different um, types of plans and goals that are put in place um, uh, you know, at every point in the farming um, cycle. Leonie, can we pop those poll results up to see whether or not we have an appetite for planning on the webinar? How did we go? Yeah, okay, good job. We've got... Um, I'm glad that no one says there's no point in planning and goal setting. Um, and we've got over half that are doing it in their head. And then, you know, well done, 40% that um, have some goals that are formally written down. So good job there. And look, um, if you, obviously we don't have anyone we're convincing from scratch, but if um, goal setting and planning is something that you don't, um, and look, I'm using the words interchangeably and you possibly interpreted the question as in, I have a goal to be here in two, five, 10 years. Um, really the plan becomes a strategy. So um, have a, let's have a talk about why it's important um, to set some goals. Um, if you are a particularly big picture person, your long-term vision and direction is usually quite clear. What can potentially be compromised is the efficiency in which you get there, because as long as you're loosely headed in the right direction, you're typically quite happy. That being said, if you are more a detailed focused person and um, you're quite particular about the metrics of what's happening in your business, it's possibly likely that there's times when you need to step back Lift your eyes up, look at, look at the horizon and have a think about the bigger picture. So I'm going to put back up in a moment that image um, around where we're headed and how we're getting there to give that a little bit more clarity. But what a, a goal, um, and we're going to talk about the right goals in a moment, but what a really effective goal will do is give your business, but also the individuals in your business, the opportunity to reach their full potential. It will allow you to uh, allocate resources effectively. It'll allow you an understanding of what, um, uh, what resources need to be acquired, what skills need to be um, acquired, whether there's any personnel that um, need to be added to the team to get us to where we need to be. Um, so that focus on acquisition of skills and knowledge, both internally, but it might be that there's a better use by getting a, a consultant in. It might be that marketing is something you're going to put some energy into, but rather than getting across the different social media platforms and development of your own website, you might outsource that. You might get someone in, no different to what you'd get a nutritionist in a feedlot or an agronomist into um, a cropping situation. So have a think about in your business whether all of the skills and knowledge that you need need to be in-house. And sometimes the most efficient use of resources is actually to bring someone else in who's um, already spent the hours and days um, fine-tuning and honing the knowledge and skills and information and curating exactly just the piece you need. So I'm always a um, bit of a delegator in that space um, too. The other thing, and I'm going to talk about this as we go through the next half an hour or so, is uh, goals give us an opportunity to hold ourselves accountable. So if you um, 
own your own business uh, and chances are um, the accountability piece can sometimes be compromised. What I'm meaning by that is you sort of think, oh, well, my, my bank manager keeps me accountable. I possibly challenge that, that if you make your payments, your bank manager is going to be happy. What is it that you're trying to achieve? And what are the, what's the ready reckoner and who's there and on board or what's there to keep you on track and keep you accountable? The other thing that business, uh, that um, goals really categorically do is they direct our business choices. So again, if um, we were to put this image back up, I hope you can recall it from last week. Um, we've got our, um, our vision and our mission at the top, um, which is then underpinned by a goal. And remember I said that we needed some sort of goal guide rails, which again, your values is part of that, but also some of the other um, sort of professionalising aspects of our business that we put in place. And the tighter the guide rails, usually the more efficient we can put rubber on the road. So um, yeah, I love this image for us to be able to see where we're headed. And I made the point before about uh, whether you're detail focused or big picture. Your big picture, you usually have a handle on, um, on this. If you love your detail, you're probably beetling away down here, but just need to make sure that we're headed up, um, can I say, the guts of the path in an efficient fashion. Um, the other thing, I made the comment about allocation of resources. Um, if we are making a decision around uh, where we're going to put our, our time and our money and our, our energy and resources, um, the question can be, our, our goal will allow us to decide if we're in here or if we're wafting out here. So the other thing with this piece is understanding um, the roles of individuals in the business and making sure that if we're to call, you know, really getting up to reach this goal, we're on a bus and is everyone on the same bus? And when we talk risk management next week, we are going to have a conversation about multi-generational family farming businesses and different um, uh, appetites for risk. But even at this point, is there someone in your business that has a goal um, of consolidation um, and maybe reduce debt load? Um, and there might be someone, maybe another business partner, life partner, that has a real appetite for success and achievement and growth. And where we see that happen is that we can potentially have people on a different path. So that being said, um, sometimes there's, we might concurrently be on half a dozen of these roads um, at any one time. So if I was to redraw this picture, I could have six little circles with all the little individual roads and they might be around one goal might be sustainability. One goal might be some off-farm investments. One might be improving genetic diversity. One might be around weight gain or profit. And what we have to decide is where we start sharing our resources because sometimes it's a matter of stealing. Um, and I, I always think here, um, I'm going to spend two minutes giving you this joke because I quite like it, is it's 168 hours in any week. So when we start talking strategy, we've got 168 opportunities or bricks to lay each week. But what we do need to do is sometimes share them amongst the roads. And sometimes we're stealing bricks from one road to, um, to add to another. Look, I've just given you, I, there's a whole concept behind that. And I've just given you two sentences, which you're probably thinking this crazy lady is now talking about brick laying. But um, that's a story for another day. Um, but in terms of strategy, it's around compromise and almost sometimes competition between the things we're trying to achieve. So have a think about that too. If you are uh, planning some concurrent goals, um, are they all um, subscribe to the same overall picture and vision? Because if we've got some that are odds, at odds to each other, it, it can be a bit tricky. Let's have a think about um, people may have come across this circle of influence, circle of control stuff. And the reason I put this up is because sometimes our ability to reach our goals um, can be compromised by things that are out of our um, control completely. So if you have a look at the tiers in this image, um, there are things that concern us that we don't have a lot of control over. And if you have a look at that um, bottle, the bottom olive green circle there, unfortunately, a lot of the things that impact um, the profitability and sustainability of a farming business fall in there. So we have got the economy, we have got um, weather that are big indicators of our 
um, of the success of our business. And we saw that through the drought where people um, were really great operators, but the profitability and their ability to meet their goals was compromised um, beyond their control. There are some things we can um, definitely influence. So there is um, our, our network and interaction with others and connectedness, and also the way or, or how effectively we stay within those guide rails and lay those bricks. So that productivity and what we're saying yes and no to and where we're allocating our time, energy and resources really does, we can influence that. But what we can influence are the things that are at the, the top is, is around having some solid values, making sure that um, the knowledge and skills we're acquiring are in line with uh, those said values and vision and mission of our business. Um, and then where we're putting um, you know, our energy towards attitude and thoughts and some of those things. So I always put this up in this conversation with producers because uh, if I was in uh, talking to other industries that have a much higher level of control over their uh, outcomes, um, this stuff isn't, isn't actually as important. Let's um, move on and have a think about um, goals and what are right, you know, what, what is uh, the right goal for your business. You may have come across the concept of SMART goals. So um, they, I'll talk about those in a moment, but if you've ever um, maybe worked in a community group, put in a grant, um, sometimes we need to demonstrate that the goals that we have are SMART. Um, the reason I bring it up here, because we're not talking about a grant or a community group or where there is a lot of accountability, we're talking about our own business. The SMART goals are usually achievable goals. So if a goal isn't SMART, it's typically um, going to be difficult um, to achieve. One of the most important things is if we are setting goals in line with our values, um, our appetite to achieve them is gonna be a lot higher and it's gonna be easy to make decisions and even maybe compromise, do what we have to do to get the job done because the gut feel of that goal is right, okay? Um, also at this point, have a think about the timing of your goals. So it might be that the goal is right, but it's actually just not right now. And sometimes it's not that the priority is uh, reduced, it's just that the timing isn't um, quite ideal. Then back to that level of control, making sure that we aren't setting ourselves up for failure. Is it through making goals a little bit more conservative that we are, um, that they're a bit more achievable? All of that being said, there's really interesting, um, some interesting reading and learning around um, contingency planning and, you know, might have plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, which in farming we know we had to do. We'd be having conversations with producers during the drought that said, if we get to April and this happens, we're going to do this. If we get to May and this hasn't happened, we're going to do this. And if failing that plan C is, so I appreciate we do need to have some optionality in our goals. If it is a goal that you can't, you can control and have full control over, and I'm going to use a really pragmatic example here, team, that is not necessarily business related, but you'll be able to transfer the um, the parallel, like parallel the story to um, some of your business goals. Um, in the instance that we do have a contingency plan or a fallback, um, it sometimes gives us that opportunity to um, subconsciously plan for the fallback. What do I mean? If, for example, and those, I haven't seen the attendance list, but there'll be people that'll know this isn't gonna be make my goals list, but say, for example, I wanted to run a marathon, but I also knew if I don't make the marathon, there's a 20K run on the same day and I could do that, okay? Subconsciously, my brain's possibly kicked into training and preparing for that um, uh, for for that 20k run. So sometimes a, a plan B in our goals will actually take away from the focus of plan A. The other thing at this point is. Um, while we want goals to be achievable, there's also some great work in this space suggesting that the more the crazier they are and the more ambitious they are, if we strategize accordingly, and I'm going to talk about strategies in a minute we can actually end up getting further than we thought. So say, for example, you want to target, realistically, a $5 million turnover is, is realistic. You could stumble towards that. If you blew it out and say, let's make it a $20 million turnover, reverse engineered that strategy, which I'm going to show you that in a moment, you might not make it to the 20, but you might make it to seven. Okay, which is better than the five. So some real schools of thought there and a little bit of, um, I guess, conflict in some of the things that you might come across around not setting yourself up for failure. 
versus being a bit more ambitious and really pushing the strategy. So have a think about how that sits with you. And if you're more likely to go, hang on, um, you know, we're fatigued here. We're looking at getting an early win in and uh, versus no, we're ready to go. Like we are fired up. So I did, um, I run a women's leadership program across New South Wales and we had a lot of um, really incredible women from farming businesses um, in the program and it was tough times. It was the last five years that we've been running it and interestingly enough, by the end of it, we're saying, hey, we need to keep these goals real because the disappointment that's come from the drought, we can't cope with anymore. It was things like, let's read five books for the year. Does it cost anything? Is it realistic? Like the goal was actually quite smart. So I know that again, we're talking marathons and reading books here in a, um, a forum where we're looking to be um, um, thriving in our business. So again, quite superficial examples, but you'll be able to use that thinking um, to parallel into your business. Um, I wanted to go back and make another uh, comment around um, goals that align with your values. If the goal uh, aligns strongly enough to your values, you will do what you have to do to get there. And um, again, uh, not, but let's go back to the marathon example. And if I was to say to a portion of the people who are listening in, um, if you run a marathon at the end of the year, I'll give you $5, okay? Um, I'm reckoning there's a few people at this point that are sort of rolling their eyes and going, not on your nearly, I can't even buy a cup of coffee with $5 these days. Um, and so for you, the trigger and the reward uh, for that is probably not strong enough. But don't get me wrong, I'm sure there's a portion of 37 people go, I'll run the marathon anyway. But then, and again, uh, a very paralleled example, but if I said to you, um, family is really important value to me, a really critical value. And if someone was to say to me, if you don't run, um, a marathon in 12 months time, you won't see your family again. Let's have a talk about triggering your values. I have picked up my phone, I've ordered myself a new pair of joggers and I've downloaded an app how to run a marathon. And guess what? I'm gonna think that every time I set that alarm at four o'clock in the morning to go training for the said marathon, do you reckon I'd snooze it? Do you reckon I'd find an excuse why I couldn't go? I'm gonna say no, but if it was for the five bucks, I'd be like, oh man, I'll give him 10 today and not have to get out of bed. Okay, so have a think about what goals you're setting for yourself and your business and whether or not they resonate. Because if they resonate, you'll do whatever you have to do to get there. So if you're willing to compromise your goal, maybe there's not a strong enough connectedness or the feeling of success at the end of that goal is not strong enough to allow you to follow the strategy. Let's, um, we're going to talk about strategies. So just this um, smart goal Beth. space. Yes. Sorry, Beth, yeah. just, just to cut in on there, we've had a question in, um, is there a trick to um, setting your goals too high that your cost can blow out in the attempt to reach an unrealistic goal? Look, it's a really good question. And then uh, if the reward is the end and we don't make it to the end and the cost is lost, the sustainability of the goal mightn't be there. So um, I did say, Leonie, that it's a real tricky one because um, I'm gonna talk now about SMART goals and them being relevant and achievable. And then I was saying set goals to blow the roof. So I guess if I wanted to sort of find that middle ground, I'd say make sure that there's a, enough um, energy and resources that need to be expended that the sense of achievement is real enough but if you map out and we're going to talk about resources next if you map out the resources and the resources that you need to reach the crazy outcome are so high that your other values that might be around longevity sustainability some of those things are compromised it's probably not a smart goal so does that make sense? So, and we're talking here about financial. If you cannot afford to reach the goal, the resources aren't actually available. So that's where we have to have a look at. And don't get me wrong, we've also decided, you might be working on a realistic goal and the drought doesn't break, or there's something that happens. Um, it might be that the tush falls out of the market and you can't actually get there. So again, our sense of control in farming um, is definitely mitigated along the way. So. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I've answered the question, but if um, you're setting goals that are so unrealistic 
And also that sense of achievement and fulfillment is completely gone. But I'm talking about maybe the compromise here is, is making sure you're extending yourself. So, you know, what is it that if you work smart and hard, uh, what can you actually achieve? And if you're setting goals that are just sort of, yeah, I'll get there and I don't have to do anything, just if I turn up, it'll happen. So, and for some people, and I think this is going to come into play next week when we talk about risk, because there'll be people um, in on, online, and I, I often see it in families, where you've got someone that is hell-bent on taking every risk and opportunity that's available to them versus people that have a more conservative approach. So um, be interesting to overlay this the risk management piece and that risk appetite piece around goals because those of us who tend to be more risky will set more ambitious goals. When people who are more conservative, uh, understandably and, and as successfully conservative, the risk takers and makers in the world Sometimes they've got to take losses with the win. So I'm not sure if that little ramble we only has answered that person's question. But um, look, I would not encourage anyone to take a goal that has an associated risk um, that could change, could compromise the success of their business, if that's sort of cake and eat it too. Um, I'm happy to take a follow-up question on that. I sort of rambled a bit there probably, but um, just making sure, I said a SMART goal is usually an achievable goal. Um, we can't manage what we can't measure, so make sure that it's specific enough to be measured. Usually that includes a number. So, um, you know, a, um, you know, improved um, profitability. Is it improved profitability by 1% or increased carrying capacity? What's the new carrying capacity? So, and are you going to be happy with one further um, head of livestock per hectare or 10. What is that um, that sense of achievement that you're looking to um, to reach out of the goal? Um, that the measurement is so critically important because we don't sort of want to get to the end and go, yeah, I guess we sort of made it, but we're not quite sure if we got there. Again, this achievability piece, we, we've been talking about it. So is it feasible? Is it achievable or, or not? Um, the relevance of it, we talked about relevance from a timing perspective. Um, so is it relevant now? Is it relevant to if you're in a recovery phase, if you're in an expansion phase, if you um, might be a multi-generational phase where you've got a change of the guards and is the goal that you're setting um, right for this time in your business? Is it that you have just expanded and it is more um, a stage of might be debt reduction and, um, and consolidation that's the priority? So acquisition of further land may not be the right goal, goal at this point. Um, so and also um, there's so much evidence around um, writing a goal down. So I know in the original poll there are people that had great goals floating around um, in their heads but getting it on paper there's some real um, um, some real evidence that that will make the goal um, more achievable. Sometimes that comes back to accountability too, that you actually document it and you're like, oh, we're sort of tied to this as well. I'll also add in if there's, we rarely operate autonomously and if there are other people in your business that you would like to subscribe to that goal and if not subscribe to it, at least support you in the achievement of that goal. Uh, I think that the record the records so everyone's on the same page and we can't get down the track and say oh hang on I didn't think we were working on that like it might be that someone's sort of up here thinking that they're okay and someone's up here thinking that they're headed in the right direction when really we sort of had people following along on the bus so is everyone on the same bus do you need to be is there um, a communication piece a conversation there that needs to happen in business uh, in your family, uh, with management, with a board, that to make sure that what you're trying to achieve, um, and again, uh, at what level is it measurable, but also what time frame. So is three months realistic? Is it a three-year project? Is it a 10-year project? And look, the time bound, uh, we all know that um, if something doesn't have a deadline, the likelihood of it um, making our urgent to-do list is is slim. So, what is it that you can do to put um uh, to put some things in place to make sure that it's that it's time bound? Um, so, hopefully, um, those couple of slides have confirmed um, the importance of setting the right goal, but also why setting a goal is important from the outset. I want to talk quickly now about the strategy and I'm going to head towards uh, a concept called reverse engineering which 
um, is a really incredibly simple process that's going to come with a really ugly slide. Okay, so I'm going to warn you on that. Don't think that you don't know how to put a slide together when you see it, but I don't know how to present it any other way. So um, one thing is to have a goal, but it's actually the strategy that gets the job done. So um, you have to be able to have a strategy, which is then allowing you to allocate resources and talking about this bricklaying business. So what is it that you need to do um, to get there? So with when we talk about um, talk about strategy develop, development, for me, that is actually um, a process called reverse engineering. So what it does do is if you are a big picture person, it puts it at the top. If you're a detailed person, the bottom line is going to be easy for you. It's about making that connection. So brace yourself. I'm going to, uh, I've got a print out of this that's coming across your email so you can get your head around it. You're probably not going to be able to read it. So the local land service team are probably thinking, this crazy lady is already admitting you're not going to be able to read her slides. Are you ready? Check this out. Can you read it? Okay, this is an example of where we have very quickly and crudely reverse engineered a goal. This particular goal is um, around having an investment property, okay? There's two really simple questions that you can ask. The first question is, what do I have to do? Or the second question is, how do I do that? It's pretty, sim it's pretty simple. So, or any version of those sort of questions. And what happens is we are going to continue to ask those questions again and again and again until we get to the point where we have a strategy to reach that goal. So a few things have happened here. I've suggested that to get an investment property, there were two parts. Or oh, how do I do that? Well, I need some finance and I need a property, okay? So if I have a look at the finance, my question was, how do I do that? And I've suggested here that I need a loan. I potentially needed to increase my income and I potentially needed a deposit. You see what I'm doing here? Next question, how do I do that? So say, for example, sourcing a loan, I needed to identify a lender but potentially increase my lending capacity. I, well, how do I do that? I could pay off my credit cards potentially or um, increase the equity in our current home. Well, let's follow this one down. How do I do that? I could increase our loan payments. Okay, how do I do that? I am going to contact the lender to increase the loan payment. How do I do that? No, no, hang on team, you just got to do it. So if you think, if you have a look at this and it's probably a bit difficult to follow down um, on your screen, it will be a bit easier when we send it to you on email. But if you get to the point where you cannot go any further, we now have a strategy. We actually have something that we can take from a three, five, 10 year plan to a monthly plan to a weekly plan, to a daily action. And if I have another look here, we're talking about, and look, really superficial, quick example, but increasing the equity of our home, we're saying that apart from the loan repayments, we could increase the value, which was writing a to-do list in a bit of a cost-benefit analysis, maybe engage a uh, real estate agent if we put another bathroom on, if we do the front fence. We might have decided to improve the front yard. We're gonna paint the fence. Okay, how do we do that? We buy paint. Guess what I can do tomorrow? The next thing to ask yourself is, do we have the resources to do this? So do I have the time to paint the fence or do I have the time or, or the money to source a contractor? And the big question, and this is around alignment to values, am I actually happy to do it? Am I willing to make the sacrifices to do the stuff on the bottom line to get to the big picture? Does that make sense? So if you think about this established deposit, I've said we're going to start saving. How do I do that? Reduce spending. How do I do that? So cut out a coffee, ditch all star and go for zero takeaways. My question is to myself, if I want to get here, am I willing to do this? And this is what we call the thing. Am I willing to do the thing again and again and again until I get here? And it's a bit like the training in the marathon. If it's for five bucks, absolutely not. But if it's for you know the greater good of my family, I will be there. So this is the set the five o'clock alarm by the new joggers, where we really we do it and we repeatedly do it until we get the job done. I'm interested in the chat box, in the questions box, is that is actually of use because what we do is we end up with a big picture going, you know, how the hell do I get there? And the, my strategy to get there is that I'd encourage you to have a look at is this concept of reverse engineering. Um, what we also need uh, to do at this point is um, is understand whether or not we're on track. So if we go uh, back so to... Yeah. Sorry, could I just go in there? Um, Tim's just asked a question. Could you just explain the difference between 
a strategy and a plan, just so that's a little bit clearer? Yeah, sure. I'm going to say um, I'm thinking they're pretty much the same thing, Tim. Like um, I would say that the strategy is that map of where you had where you're headed. And if I think about planning, and we do some work in time management and planning, I would say that the strategy, the overall overarching strategy, would populate my annual plan, my monthly plan, or my seasonal plan quarterly plan, my monthly plan, my weekly plan and my daily plan. And I'm happy, I'm going to talk about that in a moment, but if that's clarified there, the strategy is almost the roadmap, the plan is the steps we're going to take to get there. I hope, um, Leone, that that's provided that clarity. Do I maybe use the words interchangeably a little bit? Um, but I would say that pl we plan according to the strategy. So planning is the doing, is the action of um, of getting that strategy done. So the strategy, I could possibly call them out. Hopefully that's clarified that yep. question for you. Tim. Great, great, thanks. Um, so this concept of milestones and I have a little bit of time in the department, the local land services team will be with me here. When you have to write a project report, um, absolutely we're comfortable with milestones. But what does a milestone mean to you as a primary producer? It means that after year one, we've got to here. And the milestone would be that we'd put a line through here is one year, maybe a line through here is year two, and a line through here is year three to get us here in year four. So if we don't give ourselves indicators of success along the way, it might be improve, um, like an increased EBV or you know increased, um, I don't know, feed value. If we don't give ourselves indicators that we're on track, um, we're not really sure how we're tracking. If we get to a milestone and we haven't actually met it, we can then put some contingencies in place. Do we need to uh, alter the strategy? Do we need to check in and apply some more resources? Have we not been doing the thing? So we didn't do this. So guess what? We didn't get here. So we can actually hold ourselves accountable through um, milestones. The other thing that we need to do is make sure that they're realistic. So if we're approaching a milestone or an indicator in our strategy or in our, in our roadmap that we should be at a certain point, we could either, uh, as, as I said, change um, the strategy and throw some additional resources at it, potentially if they're available, might be time, might be money, might be energy, whatever it could be, or we move the time frame. So we push that milestone, which is, effectively taking this and stretching it. So yeah, it was a two year plan or a 10 year plan, it's now gonna be a 20 year plan. So, or the other thing is you miss the milestone, but you know you've got to make it up in the next um, period, of, period of time, if that makes sense. Um, so a couple of things, I wanted to make some comments here around action planning. Um, these are some of the things when we are planning towards a strategy that we need to consider. And I'm going to flick through um, these quite quickly, but do we have the resources? Um, and we've talked about this time, money, what it, whatever it is that we need to get there. Can we acquire some more? And if not, is all of the time that we're looking at um, these action planning considerations um, is around testing whether or not our goal is smart. So it mightn't be that we um, have the physical resources or it mightn't be that we have the time. Do we have the money? What is it that we need to do um, to put the plan in place? Um, if the answer to these questions is potentially no, we're in a little bit of strife um, and that's where we need to reassess um, the actual achievability of that goal. Again, I've made some reference to this stuff is around whether or not um, where the goals are time bound. If there's no deadline, usually there's no action towards them. But also is the timing right? Is it right in your stage of life, in your stage of business? Where are you at and what does it mean? Um, also, do you have the time? And if you don't have the time, can you buy the time? So it mightn't be that you can upskill to do something, but you could outsource it. So some considerations there around time. I mentioned the relationships. So um, are the other people in your business and your family on the same bus? Um, are they, and if they're not on the bus, are they largely supportive? Um, and if not supportive, I'm going to use the word here permission. Like, you know, do you, 
is it going to be okay if you're allocating resources to a certain um, project or, or outcome and it's at, not in line with the organisational's priorities um, or the priorities of your family? Um, it might be um, a priority for the individual, but as long as they're happy for you to be um, uh, to be putting energy into that space. So the question there is, is there anyone that you need to confer with before you start? Or are there any relationships that say, you know, the said marathon that I keep talking about, do I need to get a running buddy? Do I need to get a, a trainer, a mentor? Do I have the relationships in place to support a particular goal? So um, that's a nice um, consideration there. And look, you know, who's in the team? Who's in your village? Is it your family, staff, contractors, advisors? Is everyone on the same page? And the question there is, if they're not, um, or, or the question for a start is, have they been asked? So it is probably, and if not, um, why not? So making sure that everyone, and right back to this original slide um, around everyone being on the same bus. I love this analogy because whether it's a family business or a corporate, it's about being on the same bus. Um, um, I'll I just think, put in there. Um, I've had a yeah. question for Steve um, for you, Beck. What happens if family members or employees are not on the same page? Oh, it's a good one. And do we see it? Absolutely. I'm going to deal with the employees for a start. If, hopefully, you um, have engaged them and communicated effectively from the outset and suggested, hey, um, these are the things that are important to us. This is the bus. This is where we're headed. These are the guide rails. We've got this stuff in place. And that particular employee is not on the bus. I'd encourage them to get on a new one. So that's where if it is a genuine detriment um, to the business, then you know they're on the wrong bus. Quick one there is sometimes the direction of the bus isn't communicated. And I wish I had another 10 minutes because I'd give a bit more detail here really quickly. Um, a good example is whether or not efficiency or quality are the priorities. You might have an employee that thinks they're doing a great job because they're cutting corners and saving you time and money and getting to 80% when really it's the full stop that you want on the sentence and you're happy for a tiny bit more time or money to be expended to get to 100%. But he's thinking he's doing a good job and but it's through miscommunication. So that's the employee piece. They're paid to actually be on the bus. If not, sorry, buy a new bus ticket. Family members, sometimes, um, and we see it often around um, appetite for risk and also um, wanting to allocate different energies and resources to different goals at different times. I would say here, Leonie, Steve, it's actually about the communication that's gonna keep it right and justification and alignment to your values. And I'm hoping that if the value if the values are agreed upon in the family unit um, and, and the business unit, that if the goal is in line with those values and your vision and your mission and your legacy and where you're trying to head, where the bus is going, even if a family member isn't completely bought in to um, the goal, they possibly won't slash the tyres, if that makes sense. What does we see happen where the conflict comes into play is where um, the conversation doesn't happen. So, be brave enough to sit down, map this out, and then say, just checking, it might be a husband, it might be a wife, it might be a, a father-son, father-son-in-law, daughter-in-law, whatever it might be, a relationship where the conversation hasn't happened. So everyone's existing in the business on, on different buses, but we don't really know. So and sometimes there's a bit of an overlap and collision, and sometimes it can be quite diverse. Steve, I hope that has answered your question. Um, so... Where did we get to now? I've been flicking here amongst these slides, team. Um, so implementation of the strategy, which was is really, I think it was Tim that asked a question about planning. This is it. So really, if we have a strategy to get to the top of the crazy tree, and if you think about it, funnily enough, this picture here, if you drew it out tidily, would neatly fit into this picture here. So really, this is a strategy to lay the bricks and put the rubber on the road. Um, but uh, what we can allow it to do, sorry, I'm just getting back to the right slide, is allow uh, the overall picture to populate um, or form our annual plan, a seasonal plan, so that's our operation and production targets. But then also into monthly planning, weekly planning, is there a catch-up in there? So if you have a look at this slide while I'm talking, 
I've sort of put bits and bobs of how this can be achieved. So looking at a monthly plan and master list and inputs and outsiders and what needs to be um, prioritised versus that conversation at a weekly level to check back in and make sure everyone's on the bus. And then, you know, I said do the bloody thing. So that's about taking us down to the daily level of beetling away, laying those bricks and doing the things at the bottom, start chewing away at the bottom of, um, of that reverse engineered mess, I guess. So by way of summary, um, if we do uh, lean towards this sort of planning, business planning, and then back into um, strategizing and action planning, um, I feel that it's a vision and the mission and your values that frame up that um, 20 year plan, that longer term plan. And I hope you'll agree, with, this is possibly right for farming and I've worked on this and changed it as the time's gone on, but it's usually a three to five year plan with rotations and um, some of the goals you're trying to achieve in there down to getting the job done. So the strategy, which is, you know, might be a monthly and a weekly action plan um, in farming. So um, I'm happy um, to take some questions and then, um, but by way of summary, we do need to understand our direction. Uh, understand, um, are there any strengths or weaknesses in our business um, or opportunities and threats? Are we managing the weaknesses and threats and capitalising on our strengths and opportunities? Um, set some goals that correspond with your values. Create a strategy and do the bloody thing. Leonie, have yeah. you got some questions there? Yeah, I, I do have a question um, that's come in from Kate. What yes. are your top tips for getting the job done um, and for putting the strategy in place? Oh, I like that. Okay, so uh, Kate, I'm going to say at this point, don't worry, rely on motivation, uh, rely on discipline. So once we've got this um, weekly plan here, put the plan in place and follow the plan. And where I made that comment about motivation and discipline, if we don't have a plan, we rely on doing what we feel like we want to do. If we have a plan, we can actually put the discipline in place to get the plan done. Um, motivation creates momentum. Uh, discipline creates momentum which creates motivation so don't rely on um, definitely don't rely on motivating being feeling motivated to do the right thing we need a plan in place and then we need the discipline to follow the plan also making sure the resources are at the ready there's nothing more frustrating than that lack of organization that results in no resources and the job can't be done how did that go Leone any other questions coming through there uh, no, not, not at this stage, um, Beck. So um, we've got um, a couple more poll questions to run through once you've done what's coming up as well. But I think Keith's going to look at that. Yeah, sure. I'll quickly um, give this bit of a shout out and then I'll hand back to Keith. So we are talking risk management next week and I'm going to touch on um, one of the risks is work health and safety. But it would be remiss of me not to say that it's farm safety week. So my business uh, we love farm safety, we love speaking about it, we love making it practical and we're, um, you know, I just wanted to make take every opportunity, Keith and Leone, to have a shout out for you guys to make sure that your work health and safety is on the list. Um, and yeah, we are doing our part in promoting Farm Safety Week on our social media channels and we launched a new program, which you might get a chance to talk about next week. But at the end of the day, we're here to talk about planning, goal setting and strategising today. So I might... Um, hand back over to you, Keith, um, and um, as a way of a wrap up and maybe a couple more poll questions. Yeah, thanks for the webinar. Um, could we go to those slides of the, um, the grant funding for, yes. and um, see if we can um, just bring up those slides with all the um, the funding information just to recap on that a little bit. So what we've it? done last week everyone we were looking at okay. yep that's great um, we were looking at our business vision mission and goals and today what a fantastic webinar because what we've covered today will help people look at what we've got here for our grant, grant funding uh, opportunities and people might be looking at this sheet here thinking, oh man, there's so many ticks there. What do I do? Where do I start? Well, here's a hint. Think about what Beck's been talking about with risk management. Look at how you want to get your project developed and start small. 
Mm. We have a number of our people that are looking at um, at projects over a period of time. They'll start with one or two projects and we've got people that are on their fourth project and they've stepping stoned those projects to fit into each other. So going back to your business planning, your strategies, you know, you can do all that stuff in relation to these grant funded opportunities. So um, have a bit of a think about that over the next week or so. Um, determine what, you know, where you want to go with your, your business planning. Uh, it might even be that for under the res regional resilient ag component, you do a bit of that benchmarking, that financial and land capability planning, which can lead into other on ground projects down the track. Um, so great webinar, Beck, really, really good. And um, all the stuff that you've covered fits neatly like a, a hand into the glove looking at our, our project details. If Keith, I might just in, jump in there, Keith, and just launch that, um, that poll question about what funding you are thinking of applying for. If um, people jump and do that as well, and you can keep um, talking while, they, while people vote. Yeah, no, that's great. Thanks, Liani. Um, we've also got a, um, a survey question at the, an exit survey at the end of the webinar, which we're asking for people's feedback as to um, how they, they're finding these webinars. So getting back onto our, um, onto our projects, build something that's realistic, build, this, build something that's going to complement your enterprise. You're all different. Uh, looking at properties over the, the years, every one of your enterprises is different. So um, build something specific to what you want to do. Give us a ring or an email, run some stuff past us, and um, we'll keep working on um, trying to ascertain what you want to do on your enterprise, how we can do it over time and with the funding. Uh, it's a competitive round. So writing the best application is, um, is a good thing to do. We were looking at um, 79 registered um, webinar folk today. Um, so, you know, try and develop the best um, opportunity that you've got for your enterprise through grant funded opportunities. So I guess um, that pretty well wraps us up for today. Um, on ground works has come in the highest. Uh, resilient regional ag is another great one. Um, so that wraps us up for today. Um, please register for the third webinar, which will happen uh, once again next Wednesday from 12 to 1. And next week, we've got some great ideas and information coming from Beck once again, looking at challenges in your business and also managing that risk that we've been talking about today but also uh, the role of local land services in helping you further develop your enterprise. Uh, thanks very much to Beck, to Leone, to Michelle, and to once again, all of the folk that have, uh, have joined our webinars. Thank you very much. Have a great afternoon. Stay safe and well. Good afternoon. Thanks, Keith. Bye.